What's up, future respiratory therapists? In this video, we're talking all about plateau pressure. What is it? Why is it important? And how do we assess it? Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated, we're talking all about plateau pressure here today. There's a couple of things we gotta talk about when it comes down to plateau pressure and understanding what it is and why it's important. Now, we're gonna look at what plateau pressure looks like in volume control here in just a little bit. Uh, but before we do that, <clears throat> let's go back to the good old Egan's 12th edition, uh, chapter 47, page 1023, where uh, Egan's talks about plateau pressure and its value to us as clinicians in evaluating the uh, pulmonary status and the, the, the integrity of our, our patient's alveolar units in regards to protecting them. You see, we understand that, that as pressure rises in the alveoli, uh, we can damage the pulmonary units, and, and we don't want that to happen. And so when we talk about plateau pressure, first of all, we realize that uh, we assess the plateau pressure at the end of an inspiratory phase where we will then perform an inspiratory hold or pause. Now what this does is this brings flow back to zero. So in the absence of flow, when the ventilator is holding that delivered breath in the patient's alveolar units, how does that pressure equalize and average out? And that is your plateau pressure. Now it's important to realize again, that this is in the absence of flow because when you have flow being delivered through the inspiratory phase and air is moving, then you realize that the, the pressure that's going to result is not only associated with the compliance of the alveoli, but also with the resistance associated with the airways. And so when we're talking about assessing the compliance of the alveoli, we're going to take the flow out of it so we can remove airway resistance from this conversation. And so that's the importance of understanding why it goes back to flow. Now, another thing is, is that you think about it and you say, oh, when you have a patient with a elevated plateau pressure, you may think to yourself, oh, that means my alveoli are in terrible condition. They're, 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 they're extremely uh, non-compliant. And that, that might be true, but Egan says it right here on page 1023. This value is referred to as the lung thorax compliance because the compliance of the lungs and the compliance of the ribcage are being calculated as a single unit. You see, what that tells us right there is when you're assessing your plateau pressure, you're not just assessing the integrity of the alveolar units. You're also assessing the plateau pressure that could be affected by the compliance of the thorax. So you take a severe burn patient who has a very stiff, non-compliant chest wall, your plateau pressure is going to be higher because or leading to a decreased static compliance that may not have anything to do with the actual integrity of the alveoli. I'll give you another example. You take a patient with ascites or abdominal compartment syndrome and all of this pressure in the abdominal um, cavity is pushing up on the diaphragm, reducing the compliance of the thorax in general then you could very well have healthy alveolar units, but still have an increased plateau pressure. And that's because, because of that abdominal pressure pushing up, decreasing intrathoracic compliance, your, 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 your compliance of those healthy lungs is going to be decreased. So we have to realize that plateau pressure is not just and only specific to the integrity of the alveoli. Uh, it, it, it goes beyond that to the lungs and the thorax in totality. And so uh, keep that in, in mind when you're talking and thinking about plateau pressure because uh, it's important to realize that. Now, of course, if you have a patient with pneumonia, pneumothorax, pleural effusion, atelectasis, ARDS, uh, pulmonary fibrosis, those are all um, disorders that affect directly the integrity of the alveolar unit. So obviously that is also going to impact 
this finding associated with the assessment of plateau pressure. So um, it, it's, it's worth noting that, that that's a very interesting thought is that sometimes we have to think outside of the lungs and go, what is causing my plateau pressure to rise? Now, you may say, well, what is high? What is low? Well, we know the ArtsNet protocol uses 30 as their guideline or their marker for keeping and targeting plateaus below. But Egan's here refers to during mechanical ventilation, P plat, plateau pressure, should be less than 28 centimeters of water pressure. And here's the most important part. At levels greater than 28 centimeters of water pressure, alveolar damage from over distension is likely. So serious stuff here, right? We don't get paid to, 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 to damage our patient's lungs. We get paid to protect them. So understanding this concept and this value is very, very important. Now, let me show you something here uh, on the waveform here. So now the question is, okay, what does it look like and how do we assess it? Well, this is a normal pressure waveform in volume control. This is pressure waveform. As the volume goes, the pressure grows. And so we know that this is peak inspiratory pressure right here. Okay, so, so we see that, we recognize that. There's not a plateau on the screen right now. So when we want to assess a plateau pressure, what we have to do is we have to come in, a breath is delivered, that's peak inspiratory pressure right there. Now we're gonna do an inspiratory hold and what that ventilator is going to do is it's going to say, okay, let me hold this breath within the patient's alveolar units as long as this hold is happening. <clears throat> so what we'll see is it'll go from PIP down to plateau and then back down to peak. This is peak, this is PIP, this is plateau, this is peak here. Now that value right there is what we're talking about in this video. That value represents the pressure inside of the alveolar units during the, the breath hold. Now, remember I told you, it's very important to understand that this is in the absence of flow. So let me show you what the flow pattern is gonna look like. So we come over here on this first normal one and it's gonna look something like this. So flow is delivered in a constant flow pattern and then we exhale. Now, when we come over here, we're gonna see that the breath is delivered but right here, you see there's a hold. We're doing the hold right here. This is where the inspiratory hold or pause is occurring. And so what we see is that during that hold, we'll see that the flow will look something like this. And then exhalation will happen when the hold period ends. But this portion right here is very important because that is where we're talking about this flow being absent or this uh, flow being at zero during this assessment of the plateau pressure. So this is easy. You look up here, you go, okay, my pips, my pip um, is uh, 32 and my plateau is 24 and that's less than 28. And I like that unless it's been trending up from 18 and then maybe it's an indication of a problem happening. So this is not just a snapshot. This is a continual monitoring and, 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 and assessing of this so that we can not just take what this one number tells us, but what this one number tells us in accordance with the previous values that has been. So it's, it's important to, to, to watch and to follow this. And Egan's even says it here, it's important not to limit yourself to one uh, assessment data point. Uh, it, it didn't say data point, but that's really what it's saying is, is if we just look just at plateau in one snapshot, that doesn't give us the whole picture. We need to be looking at plateau in conjunction with airway resistance, in conjunction with driving pressure, in conjunction with more data points so that we can put the whole piece of the puzzles together. It's in one piece of a puzzle, it's hard to figure out what the, what the total image is gonna look like. But when you have all the pieces fitting together perfectly, we have a much clearer image of what's happening with our patients and we are able to take better care of them in the end. Now this is in volume control. This one is pretty simple. We do an inspiratory hold. We see that our plateau will drop below PIP in volume control. PIP will always be higher than plateau, always. 
Keep that in mind when you're talking about and looking at and assessing plateau pressures in volume control mode of mechanical ventilation. Now, when I say volume control, I mean pure volume control, not PRVC, because that's a pressure controlled breath targeting a volume. That's going to be a different story. That's going to actually look more like this. When we talk about pressure control, pressure control normal is going to look something like this. And so what we see here is that the waveform is going to be decelerating and then it's going to come up. Okay, and it'll come back up here during exhalation back to baseline. Now, here's what happens. You say, okay, well, where's my plateau pressure? Well, just think about it. What is plateau pressure? It's the pressure within the alveolar units in the absence of flow. Did you say in the absence of flow? I did. In the absence of flow. Well, look right here. Doesn't that look very similar to what we looked at over here? You see, when you did an inspiratory hold, you took the flow back to zero and held it there. And now in pressure control, what we know is that the flow waveform will decelerate back to zero and then hold that pressure right there. And so really, honestly, that is your plateau right there. And so in pressure control, when you achieve full alveolar filling, your PIP and your plateau are going to be the same because that's the way the ventilator is operating. It's You told it to increase the pressure by this much and to hold it by this time. This is your eye time. So during this time of the breath, flow was moving and we were sustaining this pressure. Once we got back to zero, we held for the remainder of this eye time. This right here, is your plateau. If you do an inspiratory hold at the end of this breath, it's gonna go like this. And you would say, okay, my plateau is here. But the pressure is gonna be the same. It's gonna be the same number. Now there is an instance when this is not the case. And that instance looks like this. You have a breath, you deliver the breath. And over here, you come up and you have a decelerating waveform. And we're like this. Now look what happened. Look at the difference here between this one and this one. You see, this one decelerated back to zero and held. That, by definition, is your plateau. But see, over here, we did not get back to baseline. This is what you might see in your overly compliant patients, your emphysematic patients, or your severe obstructive patients like your COPD patients and your status asthmaticus patients. You might see something like this to where the flow is still decelerating. It has not gotten back to zero. Therefore, when you do an inspiratory hold here, you will likely get a drop and then back down. And this is now your plateau. So your PIP may be 30 and your plateau may be 26. Why? Because flow during the inspiratory phase didn't get back to zero like it did here. Here, your PIP's gonna be 30 and your plateau is gonna be 30. This is the same all the way across. Not the same story over here. And we know why. Because of this right here. That's plateau pressure. In volume control and pressure control. And we understand why it's important to monitor and to uh, assess for our patients. Hey, do me a favor. Check down in the video description below. I've got a link there that will take you to the Respiratory Coach Academy where you can uh, look through a various um, uh, options of different courses that might aid you through your educational journey. Pharmacology, formulas, uh, basic ABG interpretation. I've also got the two boot camps, the TMC boot camp and the CSC boot camp that will prepare you to, to, to pass your board exams as well as your exit exams. Don't sleep on it. Get it on now. I promise you they'll help you through your school. And then also my free uh, course right here that you can get access to various free uh, information right there. Now, I'm Respiratory Coach here on YouTube. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you so much. Do me a favor. Hit the subscribe, the like, and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear what you think about this video. Uh, come follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Respiratory Coach, LinkedIn at Joe Lewis. <clears throat> and then finally, if you have any questions, send me an email, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. I thank you so much for being here. I, I love this community so much and the engagement that I get from it. Um, you, you fuel me 
to continue supporting you in your educational journeys. Remember at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.